Hello and welcome to the Red Men TV. It is the Uncensored Match build-up show. Liverpool travelling down to London to face off against Manuel Pellegrini's West Ham <coughs> United. So I'm joined by Tom, John and Adam uh, for this one. Tom, now would be a good time for a win, huh? Yeah, I think just, just keep rolling on the same way we were doing before um, the last game. I really feel like I, we just go on, we forget about the, the, the last game and just literally spank them like we did first game of the season. And, and, and I think we're more than capable of doing that. I think we're, a, we're... It depends how they come out against us and whether they go low block or whether they think, oh, we're at home, we're going to go out for it. And that gives us a bit more space in the midfield. But like I say, it'd be a good time for the win and I fully believe we're going to get it. John, at West Ham United, they're aside maybe three years ago that caused us a couple of issues, I think. Was it 3-0 to beat us at Anfield that time when Joe Gomez was playing left-back, something like that? Since then, I think the last four games, we've scored four against them in all of them. And I think, you know, we've scored 16 and conceded two in those last four games, like a couple of 4-0s and a couple of 4-1s. They're a side that we generally have seemed to have the better against. Yeah, I, I would think they're a different side now, though. I, think, I mean, I remember saying, I know we battered them at the first game of the season, but... I remember saying after that that I wouldn't want to play them later in the yeah. season because they've got good players have come in and not settled. Mm. Um, and this did seem to get better for a while, but they've just gone off the rails again, haven't they? But the trouble is that on their own stadium now, they've found some kind of a, a level and they can give teams trouble now. Um, yeah. And uh, therefore, it's not an easy game, I don't think. Uh, I but agree with that. I do think we're better away now than we are at home. Because teams don't set up the same way. Well, so. I think we've got. I think I'm right in saying we've got something like 29 points from our away games this season. So we're we're a much better proposition. West Ham United. I, th I agree with John, and, and, and I think most of us probably would add them that. You know, first game of the season. They've got new players coming in, a new manager. It was a good time to play them for us because we were just continuing on from where we left off at the, at that point, weren't we? Yeah. Um, this will be a very hard game. And it's a Monday night game as well. There'll be pressure on us because you expect City to just go and win at the weekend after what's happened midweek. Although, you know, last time they lost a the game, they went and lost the, the, the one after. So you never know. But I expect City to go and get three points. I don't even know who they're playing. But Arsenal. I expect them. It's Arsenal. Arsenal. I expect them to get three points. I, I, Arsenal are set up to be battered by City, as far as I'm concerned. Mm. They're on a bad run of form. They're not going to come and play a back eight. They'll get, City will get space. And that, I think that'll be a rollover. So that'll be four or five. I think they'll batter them. Um, so we've got to go and win this game, really. Um, obviously, we've just done the final word show on the Leicester game and we're talking about, like, let's all just calm down. We've gone five points clear. If we drop points in this one and back-to-back -back games, you've dropped points, that's when it becomes a bit of an issue and things do start to get nervous. So, just because Pep City play again, don't they, on Wednesday? Yeah. yeah. Like... Mm. <laughs> We need to win this game. It's a very, very important game after that Leicester one. And hopefully we'll have some of our first choice defenders back to slide in and it, it won't be such a, a mixed bag. It, it was interesting what Klopp was saying after the game about Henderson and Wijnaldum and that I think I'm right in saying both of them weren't training. I think I wrote it down here somewhere. <coughs> he mentioned that yeah, Henderson uh, and Genie had both not been in training properly before the game against, uh, against Leicester. Which tells me that Fabinho was definitely not in training almost if he, he was the one that was on the bench. You know, he had a tight hamstring. The extra day's break could help us here with it being the Monday in that regard. But as Adam says, it puts pressure on us in the other on the other side of things because Man City play on the Sunday. But I think, you know, Pellegrino, John mentioned that he stopped the rot early on in the season. They started to find a way of getting results. They beat Arsenal earlier on in the month. They've had three back-to-back -back away games where they've lost all of them. And I think they've had a poor result against Burnley uh, in that time, and uh, maybe it was a draw with Brighton as well. Um, so they've they've struggled recently, but they've got players like Felipe Anderson who, uh, I, I, even first game of the season, I look, I was looking down at him, going, "He's a player, him like." Yeah. Even on out of it, I know he's, he might not be playing. Uh, he's a, he's a doubt, but they do have some good players in there. But then, so 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 do we, and I I, I agree with everything. That you've said, going to be a really tough game. Pressure's going to be on, but we've said it so many times. We've had these performances where we've just gone out there and done the business. We've been professional, and it's one thing I've said about this Liverpool side for two years is that we are professional. So we go out there and do the business. We're going to learn from Leicester. 
We're going to learn, and, and even if it's a low block with West Ham, we're going to keep the possession, we're going to keep it playing, and we'll probably make more incisive runs in than we did against Leicester. If they set up the exact same way, I think we'll beat them just because we will have that extra day of training. And we'll, we will look at the, all this stuff that went wrong, and we'll do that. And that's the big thing for me now is, yes, we can go out there and we can and lose a game or drop points, but I have no doubt in my mind that we'll literally just go there and go, this is what went wrong, this is how we're fixing it, this is what we're doing here, this is how we're going to set up and this is going to get us results. Like, I I'm, I don't want to sound cocky and overconfident, but I believe in this team. I really genuinely do. John, who do you think will start at right back? I mean, the, James Milner's back from a suspension. Trent Alexander-Arnold Tr- will Trent be close. Trent will start if he's fit. Yeah. No doubt about it. And I think Milner will, will be as understudy if, if Trent isn't, isn't fit. Um, I don't. I don't. I think that's a bit of a no-brainer, really. I mean, why would you play Anderson if you've got Milner, yeah. and why would you play Milner if you've got Trent? So you know, I, I think our selection is going to be based on how those injuries are. You know, Lovren's coming back from illness. Does he prefer him, or you know, does he stick with Matip? I personally stick with Matip because uh, he's played the last few games, and I don't think. She, Changing your defence all the time is great for you. No. You know, can't wait so. till Gomez is back. You know, yeah. no, me neither. That's, so that's the big one. Yeah, he's he makes such a big difference to our defence, doesn't he? And that I, I I actually think Lovren's probably a better centre back than Matip. You know, I, I although I really like different facets of Matip's game that I think he does much better than Dejan. For example, you know, being able to kick the ball. Um, I think Matip much better at that. But as a defender, I like Lovren a little bit more. Joe Gomez is like both of them combined. They're, they're good things combined plus fifty. Yeah, and then negatives largely taken away. Yeah, he's, he's more confident on the ball. You look when Virgil. He's Van a better player. The ball on his feet. Yeah, that, that's that, that's the that's the top and bottom. Of it. And he's better, he's better covering, at football than both of them. He's better at covering that right hand space and when the when the full back goes fa- up. He's faster you know? as well. Yeah, he's, he's really fast. He, he is a big miss. Right back's a big thing, but I think Milner just got. If Trent's not there, Milner's fine there. I think you saw the limitations of Henderson against Leicester, but in terms of once we... Henderson was allowed a bit of freedom towards the end and you saw that whipping in. Milner does that from the off, I feel like. Yeah. And as long as you have that defender and the midfielder being able to cover that, and that's the big miss, especially when Milner's not in the midfield. Milner on the left side of the midfield is fantastic for covering for Robbo. You need to have that player in the midfield who's going to be steadfast and make sure that we cover that right-hand side because... I don't know if, if, if Lovren or Matip, uh, J, uh, uh, they are good at doing it. They can do a job there, but we just spoke about Joe Gomez. If Joe Gomez is there, I have no issues with him covering that right-hand side and being comfortable on that touchline. Them two, I'm a, not worried, but they're just not as good. as The one thing that's actually really interesting is, regardless of whether Trent's fit or not, Milner being back makes our midfield better. Because it frees up probably Fabinho to come back in there, Gini Wijnaldum, Henderson to be in there, and that's uh, you know, no disrespect to Naby Keita. I thought he had a, one of his better games against Leicester. I don't think he's at the level of those other players. And you know, we had an interesting chat at them about about Naby Keita. So it'd be interesting to give your thoughts on what you would do with him and whether you'd play him in this game or not. Um, well, obviously we'll get we'll get to the preferred 11s and as we'll see when we get to that, he's in mine. Um, I want him to get three, four, five games on a bounce here. I want to see him play. I want him. I, Why I, is that? I think, like I was saying before, I think he's a confidence player. And if you're going, if you're going to give him that game against Leicester, and okay, he didn't light it up because you know it was a difficult game on a difficult pitch and everything we've already said. It was one of his best games, and if he has one of his best games, and then you go right now back to the bench, it, that can shatter him. He needs to be going right. You made progress continue to make it. West Ham at the start of the season was the best game he's had this season. So what a game to give him his second start on the bounce. A team he's already played and looked brilliant against. He's got to play for me just to get that confidence. I think, you know, Wayne Alden has been one of our best players this season. He's having a world of a season, so he's got to be in the team. And I think Fabinho, if he if his hamstrings sound, he starts as well. So that's why that's the midfield I've gone for is Cater, Fabinho and Wayne Alden. Um those two are so solid as a pivot of the, the two of them and that could be a three or it can go to a four five one with Cater in that free attack on midfield role. He plays for me. He, he's got to. It's interesting that I mean I, I, you know I, 
we'll get on to the, our preferred 11s a little bit later on, but how do you feel, John, about Naby Keita getting a second start on the bounce? I'm, I'm sort of quite persuaded by the argument. You know, I mean, I haven't put him in mind because I, I went for the notion that I want our front three to be back to the front three. I want to play 4-3-3 three, three, and I want three in the middle and I want them to be tough and strong to allow our three forwards to play. So that's the way I, my thinking but I do like the notion that Keita needs a run so we can get the best out of him. Uh, at some point, we've got to do it. I would play 4-3-3 yeah. three, three with Keita in the team. Yeah, yeah. I'd have Fabinho, Holden, Wijnaldum and Keita. Or you could even swap that and have Wijnaldum, Holden and have Fabinho as one of the eights. And then I'd have, if it was up to me, I would have the front three as Mane on the left, Salad on the right and Fabinho doing his thing in if, the middle. If he doesn't quite create enough, say, against Leicester, he, he, was, he was decent. But he didn't quite create enough. He had a few little runs in. He has that shot where he gets taken out. If he has another one, then performances, does he then take the next game? Is that the run that you want him to have until he gets that? Or at some point, you just got like with Shakiri, where you're going, all right, he's had a few runs in the team and he's not really done the business. So let's get rid. Not get rid, but get him out of the team for a bit. Is that, would you do that? or? I would give him at least the next two games, which I believe are West Ham and Bournemouth. Mm. And then we've got United after that. So. We see the progress he makes against West Ham and Bournemouth, yeah. and then we make a decision on that United game. Um, but he, he plays the next two games for me. Fair. Unless he gets injured or he has gets sent off or has a, an absolute stinker where it's like, whoa, you actually need more time on the training pitch. If he has two more Leicesters, then you go, do you know what? He's made a bit of progress, but now Man United's here. Let's go back to what we know, which is probably a midfield of Wijnaldum, Henderson and Milner. That is the team that will play Man United, I think. It's we, a, we it, probably predict it's that a really interesting time. theory. It's not something I'd, I'd thought about. I think, you know, our position in the table probably means there's not as much, uh, there's not as many games for Klopp to trial these things in anymore, is there? You know, it feels to me like, yeah. and I said this to Paul last week, about Rafa Camacho, I said, if we were sixth with no chance at top four, mm. I think Rafa Camacho plays that game against Leicester yeah, yeah. because you're looking to the future and you're trying to get him a little bit of game time. But also, if we had everyone fit, if Henderson, uh, Milner, Fabinho were all fully fit, Cater wouldn't have played last night. No. You know? So will he play? He's got to grab his there? opportunities, though, that, and that's the mm. thing. And, you know, how is he going to improve? He doesn't seem. You, you, when we were talking earlier, you were citing Shakiri as like almost the opposite. Kaiser doesn't feel like a guy who's going to come into the game and really turn it on like Shakiri did against Man United. He definitely feels like he needs to get into it, into his stride. Almost first ten minutes, passing's a little bit off. Gets better as the game goes on. Gets better as the game goes on. Still getting used to to everything. So really, inter really interesting talking point is Naby Keita. Let us know in the comments section what you guys would do with Naby. Do you agree with Adam and and John, or are you a little bit more apprehensive maybe uh, than that? So uh, we'll move on. Um, we'll do the preferred elevens in a minute, uh, but first of all. All, we got a little something from our newsroom podcast that I was lucky enough to do with Echo journalist Ian Doyle. What do you think? What do you think's wrong with Kaiser at the moment? Well, it's easy. He's a central midfielder, and all his best games have come in central midfield. And when he's not played in central midfield, he's not that good. Simple as that. It's not, it's not <laughs> rocket science. A, do, do you think there's a reason why he's being introduced on the left hand side? Do you think the formation changes? Well, the formation him? change that we mentioned before. I suspect that they, they probably brought, brought him in to play in a three, or maybe at the top of the three. Oh, certainly one of them. And playing him on the left is just getting him in the team because he needs the minutes as well. You look at his best games that he's played this season, which, OK, a lot of them were early on, home to West Ham, away to Crystal Palace, a bit later on away at Burnley, when he wasn't surrounded by the first-choice Liverpool team, but he was he was very, very good. And, he, and he's up against a, a Burnley team who, you know, as we saw with Joe Gomez, they don't kind of mess about, do they? So mm. they were putting the foot in a little bit, and he was just... Just getting stuck in with the rest of them. So that's where his strength is. But the way Liverpool are playing at the moment, you drop in Fabinho, you drop in Juan Aldum, you drop in Firmino out of that position that he's in at the moment. No. OK, we've mentioned it already, Adam. The preferred 11s, mate. Uh, we'll start with yours. We've got most of it um, already. But you've said Trent if Milner is... Uh, sorry, Trent if he's fit. Yeah. And then Matip, Van Dijk, Robertson, Fabinho, uh, Wijn Aldum and Keita in a 4-3-3 with Salah, Firmino and Mane. Um, I can see there you've got the front three, you've got the midfield that you wanted, and it makes perfect sense about Trent Alexander-Arnold. I don't think there's really any more talking points in that, to be honest with you. No, Other the, than, the only why, why no Shaqiri? Um, I think he's going to be best used as an impact player. I think we've seen that. 
like the the games where he's come on and he's had a point to prove and he's come on to try and change the game where legs are tired, he can have a massive impact on a game. When he's playing from the start, we're not seeing they're not they've not been his best games. They just haven't. Um, I think he's a great option to have on the bench. I really do. But I want to see that front three back to the front three that went all the way to the Champions League final. That were tearing teams like Man City and Roma to bits. With Salah on the right, where he's at his most influential. That's where Salah's at his best. He can get into the game even when things aren't happening. Then, if he's up front, unless the ball is given to his feet in a bit of space, he can't do anything. If he's on the wing, he can go to right back, pick it up, and create a chance out of nothing. So, for me, I want to see Salah back on the right. I actually, it, you know, we call it preferred 11s for a reason, don't we? I don't think that's the 11 we're going to see, but that's what I would want. Yeah, and John, you've gone um, Trent if he's available, but Milner if not. Yeah. Uh, you've gone for a midfield three. We mentioned it, Fabinho, Wijnaldum, Henderson, and then Salah, Firmino, Mane again. So very similar. I, th- I, th- I think um, that... that um middle three that Adam mentioned for United is sort of his default option and Mane, obviously Milner won't be in it if he's playing right back so I think you know um, Fabinho, Wijnaldum and Hendo are the, are the three strong guys who will give us a base for those three forwards to do what they do and that's what I like to see. Um, I mean there's an option I suppose to put in a one player in the middle who's going to be a bit more free flowing but we're playing away you know, I think let's be strong. I mean, I, I, I'll come to you next, Tom, but there is something that, you know, I'll, spoiler, my front three is exactly the same as yours. It's Salah, Firmino and Mane. Is the, and Tom, yours isn't. Yours is very much the same as what we've been playing. Now, are we throwing the baby out with the bathwater a little bit here? And, you know, as in me, Adam and John, because... This is a side that's got 61 points so far. Liverpool have never had 61 points at this part of the season. And yet all three of us, after one one all draw, have gone, fucking 4-3-3 again, please. Let's correct the team. You know, is, is, is that why you're thinking? Well, I, it, or do you think we're, we're maybe just jumping the gun a little bit? To be here? fair, you're, you're all right in your reasonings because the reason 4-3-3 stopped working for us this season, didn't it? A few times where we just went... Okay, this this just hasn't worked, and and we were frustrated with it, and then maybe going back to it, it's gonna freshen it up a bit, and we're able to be free flowing again. I just feel like that four two three one's worked. Think about the team that's going out there. In my team, it's Fabinho and Genie. I thought Fabinho when he came on against Leicester was fantastic yeah. in terms of winning headers and showing up that right hand side. Probably feel the like best player other than Manny for us. He was only on the pitch for twenty minutes. Exactly. So I, I thought he was brilliant. And then if you've got them two holding our two best centre midfielders this season I think that's fantastic and it depends on how West Ham shape up for me if they decide to come at us a little bit you you, you mentioned uh, Felipe Anderson if they're going okay we can get something out of this game that frees Shaqiri up to be able to to spray them long balls over to Manny to do them little dink balls over to Salah to have that little link up play with Firmino and I feel like I don't think West Ham are going to go proper low block and I think that's going to that works into this 4-2-3-1 system massively for me. And I've, even though I think we'll still see that three at the, the top with Salah on the right in that formation, I feel like Salah likes to drift over there anyway. Bobby will sit in the centre and I feel like it'll morph into that regardless. But it'll just give us... The only issue is Shaqiri defending and whether he's going to put in the shift. We saw when, was it Southampton, the 3-0? And and we blew them away first half, and then Klopp just went. We're not, we don't have control of this game in the defensive sense. Get them off. I mean, I, I feel like that could be the option. We'll play that. Shakiri. Hopefully, we'll blow them out of the water first half, and then we can see Kater maybe second half come in and show it up. I mean, that's pr- probably going to be the way Klopp thinks. To be honest, it's just. I think we're all longing, as Adam said, for those games when we just rip people apart in fifteen minutes. Yeah. You know? And that was Salah on the right was a massive part. Like yeah, right. I, I've I've gone back for that front three. I've lined it up slightly different in that I've kept it more as a four-two-three-one. My idea is why and Fabinho uh, as the two midfielders and Kater as the ten. And I say the ten like that because I think he starts ten yards deeper than Firmino. And I've said this a few times now. In fact, for a few weeks, yeah. I think Firmino likes to 
drop deep and pick the ball up. I think Kaita should start deep and pick the ball up and drive forwards. And, and it's it's almost it's just a three man midfield with a double pivot essentially is what I I like the look of. And and Adam also convinced me yeah. in the final word when we did that that Kaita should get a run of games like. And that's the way that I saw him fitting into that midfield. And again, in the Oxley Chamberlain role is how I'd like to see it. And to be honest, I'm. A little bit disappointed in Shakiri's performances the last few weeks. That's why he's not in my preferred eleven anymore. I think, you know, the game against Leicester, I thought he was inconsequential. Um, he just didn't get into the game at all. You know, we, we could have been playing with ten men, and I don't think I'd have noticed. To be honest with you, Shakiri just... needs his position to be under threat. You look at like what he was like at Stoke. Like he wasn't bothered. He didn't care about playing footy there, and we signed him on the sort of well, we know on his day he can be a good player. He's come to a big club. He's been told, look, you're not in the team. Force your way in, and he did. And then once he's got in, he's pretty much been a regular starter, and there's no pressure for him to be booted out, really. If he misses one game, he starts the next one, yeah. and he knows that at the minute. And I think if we go, look, you just chill out for a bit, and you can be an impact player, it might piss him off a bit, mm. and he, he might for, that. force his way back in. That's what you, you need Shakiri to be angry. It was that hunger and that yeah. anger that probably got him into the side in the first place. Okay, uh, so let's look at the, some of the rival fixtures before we wrap up then. Spurs play Newcastle. It's a win for them, that really, isn't it? Newcastle? Yeah, Newcastle are better away than they are at home, aren't they? And they beat City at home. So I'm, I'm just I'll call a draw, on not I? You call a draw 12.30 Saturday morning. Yeah. I'm just thinking back to when we spanked them. I'll be honest, Spurs are a good side. Yeah, Spurs are a good side. Um, so that, that sh yeah, you'd, you'd, I think the betting man would say that Spurs are going to win that one. Chelsea, fresh off the back of their midweek sp Banking by Bournemouth. 5 0 to Huddersfield. 5-0 to Huddersfield. I'm not sure they've scored five all <laughs> season long, to be yeah, honest with you. Yeah. Um, that's a home win, isn't it? Uh, Leicester play Man United, and we've saw how dangerous Leicester were. They're actually playing at home this time. Leicester will win that. Le yeah, Leicester beat City there, didn't they? 2-1, so Leicester. 2-1, Leicester. That's a tough away, that Leicester ground. I hate going there. A, I know we won when we went there this season, but I've seen Leicester demolish us a few times there. And Man United not coming off the best results as well on Tuesday, you know, having to come yeah. from behind to, to get that draw. Uh, and the big one for us, I suppose, really, is Manchester City Arsenal. Adam's already given his thoughts on it, John. How do you see that one playing out? It's at it's I, at the Etihad. Did, didn't Arsenal win there last year or the year before, I think? So, who knows? I think Arsenal have got the firepower, haven't they? But I think Adam's right when he was saying before the set up for they're going to go for it and City will just control the ball and play through them and mop everything up. I, I, it's interesting now to see how City cope with that with that loss, loss and see if... I, I bank on them having the mentality to do it, but if they just go, ooh... If Arsenal get an early goal, think? then it could be an interesting game. Mm. But in all I mean, honesty, I can't see City scoring less than City's four in that game. City's last two games, they've looked like a side who'd given up thinking... <coughs> that they needed to put all the effort in to yeah. win the game. They've strolled around the pitch and they've come a cropper because of it. Yeah. This won't be one of those games, though, will it, with, with it being know. Arsenal? I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. If they get an early goal, it'd be lovely for just like Lacazette. To, and of course, to, to Arsenal can not score goals. Yeah, yeah Lacazette, Aubameyang, they're two absolute goal scorers, aren't they? Ramsey's been key to everything that they've been doing over the last few weeks, which is mad. Bellerin's a big loss for, for Arsenal there, though. Who, who would they play on that? On the, I don't even know. Is it Lichtenstein or something? Well. So they don't have that much pace on like the City are going to run riot on uh, the right-hand side. Where Bellerin plays, so Sane, like Sane against gonna, uh, Arsenal's uh, sub right back. You know what I mean? Yeah, that, that's going to be dangerous. Is he 35 or something? <laughs> He's slow, I know they that. They could play Carl Jenkinson. Is play. he still there? Yeah. It's a shame I, thought, I thought Markovic was making a <laughs> living out of us. Yeah. <laughs> and Jenkins still, still at Arsenal, really. Yeah. Well played. It's going to be an interesting Mark. game. I'm going to. We'll watch that. No matter. What, to be honest, it doesn't really matter. We spoke about this five points ahead. All we need to do is our business, and we'll be fine all the way through. But it'd be nice if they just okay. lose. Score predictions. Me, Chris Pager, <laughs> um, because John always gets to pick the score <laughs> prediction before me, and we always pick the same. Uh, I am going for a three nil away win to Liverpool in this game. Adam, one nil to Liverpool. John. Well, I think that their crowd are going to want them to to be up for it and they're going to drive them on. And because of that, I think we're going to batter them. But I think 3-1 probably. 2-0. Okay. 
2-0. There you go, four Liverpool victories. Leave me yours in the comments section below. Uh, let us know how you think the game will play out, who you think will start uh, at right-back and centre midfielder. Do you agree about the Naby Keita shouts and do you think that we're all nuts for dropping the 4-2-3-1 formation and going back to a 4-3-3? All those thoughts in the comments section. Like the video, subscribe to the Red Men TV on YouTube. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you to those behind the camera, Simon, Thanks, Simon and Bailey. And we'll see you all next time on the Red Men TV.